In this episode, I will create the centering device for the Enigma machine, which fits onto the back and locks the rotors into one of the 26 possible positions. 3D Printing and Enigma Machine Part 3 The centering mechanism is essential to the function of the Enigma machine, as it aligns all the contacts on the rotors by holding them in position. It does this by having a sprung mechanism which slots into one of the troughs on the rotor and, even if it is off-center, will return to a correct position. The rotors can therefore not be between positions and will be considerably more accurate. Additionally, the mechanism prevents the rotors from spinning or being pushed more than they should be. The designs that I am using call for rather thin sides on the centering device, but I quickly realised that these would not be sufficient as there would be far too much lateral give. I therefore doubled the thickness of these side pieces on my first attempt, but discovered that even that would not be sufficient. And so, I decided to make the uh, left side piece about five times thicker than it was designed to be, and this seemed to solve all of the issues that I had previously experienced. The entire mechanism can be retracted by pushing the lever backwards. This allows the rotors to be easily removed and changed out. However, at the moment, it does not have that effect, as all of the rotors are fixed in place with one single rod throughout, rather than the three different rods which can be slotted together in the final design. Since the last episode, I have also made some small upgrades to my 3D printer. I upgraded the extrusion mechanism from the plastic stock extruder to a metal extruder and replaced the Bowden tube with a Teflon version. I also, in this time, properly cleared out the nozzle and made sure that the Bowden tube was flush to the nozzle. Since then, I haven't had any problems extruding. I've also taken the opportunity to change the position of the filament. Rather than having the filament above the um, 3D printer, I've moved it to the side and have printed a um, attachment which allows this. This has saved a lot of space and has allowed me to reorganize my working place. Having improved my work environment, I uh, moved forward on the construction of the compensator and drivers. The compensator is uh, what takes the mechanical movement of a key being pushed and translates it into the movement which uh, pushes forward the rotors and the drivers are the actual pieces which push forward the rotors. Now the drivers are shaped in such a way that they fit into the notches in the rotors and only push uh, the next rotor forward once uh, in every 26 uh, pushes of the previous rotor. Since the compensator that's designed in the plans is actually too big to fit on my 3D printer, I decided to make a scaled down version until I could work out whether it worked. Now, since the scaled down version worked, I decided that actually, before I scaled up and built the full version, I would build some of the other infrastructure of the machine around it. And so I started designing the keyboard and lamp board. The keyboard was also too large to fit into my 3D printer, and so I decided to split it in two after designing it in CAD. These two parts were then strengthened by putting a spar across the front and across the back. And this meant that it wouldn't bend in half when a key was pressed strongly. The next thing I needed to do was to create the uh, columns which hold up the keyboard, 
And so I took the measurements from the, the, the plans and produced them on my 3D printer. In order to mount them on the piece of wood that I'm using as my base, I first drilled a hole where I had marked out the position by measuring off the plans, and then from the other side I slightly countersunk the bolts that I was using um, by using a larger drill bit, which was the same as the diameter of the uh, screw heads. The next and final part that I achieved was building the light board. Now the light board is made up of two main pieces held up by columns. The top piece is where the lights actually poke through, and the bottom piece is where the wiring goes. The bottom piece that I've designed is actually made up of three different pieces in the original plans, and I merged these together because it was simply adding complexity um, to the build by printing them separately and reconstructing them. On the plans there is also another tray which sits in this construction which uh, supports the lights. However, since I do not know exactly what kind of lights I'm going to use in the final build, whether they be incandescent or LEDs, um, I'm not going to put that tray in until I've made up my mind. Finally, once I designed and printed the columns and attached the light board, the entire construction was starting to look much more like an Enigma machine. The final thing I decided to do in this episode was to create a Singiverse repository for all of the files involved in the Enigma machine build. The repository is obviously not complete, but it will allow anyone who actually wants to uh, create a similar project to have something to build off of. So if you want to access these files, um, I will put a link in the description. And while the only files which I've uploaded so far are the ones for the rotors, by the time this video comes out I will probably have uploaded the ones for the reflector as well. And I won't upload the rest of the files until I've actually finished the machine. So here's what the machine looks like now. It's um, looking considerably more completed than it did at the start of this episode. And the next things I'm hoping to do is to get the compensator um, fully working, as I've only printed a smaller sized version so far, and also to get the keys working. Mm -hmm.